we're alive and well. Hallelujah. Well, greetings to everybody here in Lockhart, Texas. Uh, good to see y'all on this beautiful Sunday morning. Greetings to our online viewers. We're good to see, glad to see, uh, not see you, but we know you're there. But anyhow, good morning to you as well. So greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, hallelujah and amen. Okay, moving on. Uh, don't forget to, uh, to vote. The early voting is over with. The last opportunity to vote would be Tuesday, November 8th from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. That is the main election day. And uh, don't forget, if you haven't been yet, get on down there. Vote your faith. Vote the Bible. Okay, I got a special treat for you this morning, and that is a little, I wouldn't call it a poem, but it's a list of the names of God, and I'm going to go over that with you and just share with you. You know, God likes to be called by His name. For instance, uh, this first one here in Genesis, He is Adonai, Sovereign Lord, and when you need a Sovereign Lord, you call on Adonai, and Lord, Adonai, that's your Father, Father God, call on Him. So let me go ahead and read these for you. I think you'll get a little something out of them. At the very least, you'll get the names of God. So in Genesis, he is Adonai, and that means sovereign Lord. Also in Genesis, he is Elohim, creator, creator. We know that. We know that. That's good. Call on him when you need him, when you need the creator. In Psalms, he's Elohim Cha Chaim, living God. In Jonah, he is El Chunun. Gracious God. In 1 Samuel, he is El Diot, God of knowledge. In Malachi, he is El Ichad, the one God. In Daniel, he is El Elon, the most high God. In Psalms, he is El Emet, God of truth. In Jeremiah, he is El Gibor, mighty God. In Nehemiah, he is El Hanora, awesome God. In Psalms, he is El Olam, the everlasting God. In Genesis, he is, all, he is El Roi, the God who sees me. I think that came from that story where Sarah told Abraham to go into her servant uh, and take, make a baby, and she did, and then she got, she got upset. Oh, they probably put her out of the house, and she was out in the desert, and God spoke to her, and she said, the God who sees me. El Roy. In Psalms, he is El Salai, God my rock. In Genesis, he is El Shaddai, Almighty. Amen. In Isaiah, he is Emmanuel, God with us. That's one of my favorites right there. In Psalms, he is Jehovah Elohe, the Lord my God. Again, in Psalms, he is Jehovah Ezer, the Lord our helper. In 2 Samuel, he's Jehovah Mola, the Lord who rewards. That almost sounds like a Mexican dish right there, some mole. <laughs> In Psalms, he's Jehovah Hosinu, the Lord our maker, the Lord our maker. In Genesis, he is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide, hallelujah. In Ezekiel, he is Jehovah Makeh. The Lord who molds me, he makes us into that person he wants us to be. Hallelujah. In Exodus, he is Jehovah Mekadishkem, the Lord who sanctifies you. Hallelujah. You are all sanctified. That means you're set aside for God's purpose. Hallelujah. Know that. Know it in your heart. Know it in your mind. Just know it. Know it in every fiber of your body. He sanctifies you. He sets you aside for a time such as this for his work. In Exodus, he is Jehovah Nisi, the Lord is my banner. In Psalms, he is Jehovah Ra, the Lord my shepherd. In Exodus, he is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals, the Lord who heals. He's in the healing business, folks. In 1 Samuel, he's Jehovah Sabbat, the Lord of hosts. In Judges, he is Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is peace. In Ezekiel, he is Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there. In Jeremiah, he is Jehovah Sidkinu, the Lord or our righteousness. In Exodus, he is Quana, jealous. We've read that in the Bible. He's a jealous God. And last but not least, in Exodus, he is Yahweh. I am. Hallelujah. That's your 31 names of God. 
in Hebrew taken from the Word of God in the mighty name of Jesus for your benefit. Now, I have a scripture, and guess what? It comes from the names of God. In Psalms, he's Jehovah, Hoseinu, the Lord our Maker. That would be, if you will, turn your Bibles to Psalms 95, 6. This is our scripture for this morning. And here it is. And what did it say? He was the Lord our Maker, right? Didn't I say that? Sure you did. Okay. The Lord our Maker. Very good. Okay. Psalms 95, 6. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. There, there's where it came from, right there. And with that said, let's go ahead and, and pray. And then we will uh, enter into worship. Okay, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we just thank you and praise you. And we give it all to you. All the glory, the honor, and the praise in the mighty name of Jesus. We just thank you and praise you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for our homes. We thank you for the, our pastors. We thank you for this body of Christ. We thank you for this building. We thank you for your word that you're going to bring to us today and impart to us and share with us and enlighten us and, and give us knowledge and wisdom that you do every day. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank and praise you and we give you all the glory. Father God, we're going to have communion today. We dedicate that to you as well. Uh, everybody be mindful. We're going to do communion. Uh, prepare yourself mentally and spiritually for that. And Father, we just give you all the praise and the glory, and we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. and amen. Okay, so that brings us to worship. Back to the scripture. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Worship team, take it away. <laughs> Psalms 119.8 says, Open my eyes that I may see wondrous things from your law. Our first song is about opening the eyes of our heart. Let's ask him today, be mindful of the words that we speak. Let's stand and sing.
many of us can use more of the Lord. Man, every day. Thank you, Jesus. I don't think we can ever get enough of the Lord. And I just think that's a a good song to end on and to remind us how much we need him. Thank you, worship team. We're going to just continue with the same attitude of worship as we continue in. And, and as we just kept singing that song, it just kept reminding me of how more and more we need him. You know, it's, um, it's not getting too much easier every day, right? It seems to just seem to, I don't know. There is, there is a light, though, at the end of the tunnel. So be encouraged about that. So with that in mind, just remember that that song is a, it's a constant reminder and a prayer that we need him more. So this morning as we get into the tithes and, the, and offering, I'm going to bring to you this scripture that, that we're all at one point or another are familiar with. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, and we're going to start at 6. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposed in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always having all significancy significance, <laughs> and all things may have an abundance for every good work. As it is written, he has dispersed abroad, he has given to the poor, his righteous endure forever. Thank you, Lord. Now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed that you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Thank you, Lord. That's a promise from the Lord. Isn't that awesome? He is our provider. And remember that everything that you give unto the Lord and you sow, he gives back to you. And we do it, why? Why? To give God glory. We honor him because of his faithfulness. You know, the Lord said that he purposed it in our heart. You know, we are to be givers and doers. When we have the Lord's righteousness in us, right? We can't help but want to do what the Lord does and have a heart of Christ, and that is to give. And as we sang that song, I need you more. I know part of it is financially, and, and a lot of us are, are struggling. I understand that. And so a lot may be thinking, I barely have enough to buy groceries for me. But you know what? God is so faithful. Amen. What doesn't make sense to us, and maybe we may not even see it physically, but when you just step out in faith and just give because of obedience, because you know the Lord is faithful, you'll see that he will give back to you. Because it says what you sow, you will reap, right? Right? So God is faithful, and I know sometimes it gets pretty close sometimes, and we're like, Whoa, I need you now. <laughs> I need you more now. <laughs> but that's okay. God never fails, though. He's faithful. And so in our hearts, though, we're to search it and, and give what you can. Of course, we don't want you to go without or anything, but we just do what you know you can do. And you do it with the, with the, with the faith and, and with obedience and just knowing that God is faithful. As brothers and sisters here, that's what we're here for is to help one another in a time of need. And, of course, there's always uh, a need in one way or the other, and, and that's what we're here for. So if you're ever in need, you know you can come to us for that. Right? Everybody know that? Amen. Can I get an Amen. Well, that was a sad amen. Can I get a louder amen? Amen. 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 That's right. 
Yes, that's what we're here for. We're here to be for, here for one another, to love on y'all, to encourage y'all, to help y'all out, whatever it is. But whatever it may be, though, we need help from others, right? We can't just be a one-person thing. It has to be a unity at church. So with that being said, come on up and, and give your um, tithes and offering this morning before I pray over it. That's so good. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord. Father, we just honor you this morning as we have stepped out in faith, trusting and believing in you, Lord, as your word said. Father, we believe in your word, and we know, Father, you are um, faithful to your promises. And so I believe that the seeds that are being sown right now, Lord, will be used for your glory and for your kingdom. And as you search the hearts of those that gave, Lord, I pray, Father, you will give back to them abundantly, Father. And, Lord, we just uh, pray that you uh, bless the seed. May it be multiplied for your glory and for your kingdom. And, and may it be used, Lord, to give you honor and glory. And, again, we just thank you, Father. We pray for those that were not able to give, but we always know that you will open that door of opportunity for them, Father. And again, we just give you all the glory and ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, now we're going to get to the announcements this morning. First of all, I just want to say I'm excited that cool weather is coming. I may be one of the few that is excited about that, but I am so excited. And so I'm looking forward to that. So next Sunday, we should be all nice and cozy, uh, according to what the thing said so we'll see but I also want to continue with our announcements I think everybody is aware or if not uh, this coming Tuesday is a very important day and if you have not voted early Tuesday is the day to do it so please 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 go out there and vote of course we want to say we've been stressing up here that we believe that you you know Follow your well, follow your heart, but pray that it's biblically uh, standards, and that's who we want to vote for. We want those um, laws put into into work. This for us, you know, there are a lot of things going on that I know that are unpleasing to the Lord, and um, God is faithful to those that are faithful to Him, but God's judgment is also there too, um, eventually. You know, and we will reap, well, those will reap the benefits of those, um, how would I say, those go against the Lord and what he has for us. Um, so go out there and vote, please, and, and remember that you vote for the person who who fits closest to the biblical standards that we believe, okay? We, we know there's no perfect person out there. But you want to at least vote for the one that represents the closest to the biblical standards that we stand on, okay? All right. Now, with that being said, we have the rest of the announcements, and we just want to continue to remind you to, to follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram for all our services, which, um, which you can go to vclockhart.com for all that. And just encourage others to go to those websites as well. Um, Wednesday, we have Bible study, lessons from Elijah for our youth and our children as well at 7 o'clock on Wednesdays. And then we just have Sunday, uh, 9 o'clock English and Spanish at 11. So we pretty easy peasy, nothing too complicated this morning. So everybody good? Amen. Everybody excited? Amen. All right. So we have children's church and youth, so... Y'all want to go ahead, and now we have our word this morning. Welcome, Pastor Sally, this morning.
Aleluya. Gloria a Dios. ¿De qué es esto? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Up early this morning, huh? <laughs> Same time. Thank you, Lord. I'm just overwhelmed with, with God's goodness. Have you ever been overwhelmed with God's goodness? You know, if you just start thinking about it and you start confessing how good he is and he'll remind you of all the good things that he's done for you and, um, and you'll feel overwhelmed. Amen. Amen. Um, today I'm going to talk about our inheritance. Do you know you have an inheritance? Do you know what it is? Where is it? Is that it? That's a clue. Where is it? Where's the inheritance? Where's it listed? Where does it tell us about it? In his word. Amen. <laughs> Let's pray and then we'll talk more about that. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we're just so grateful this morning, Father. We're just overwhelmed with your goodness, Father. You're a good, good Father. Lord, I thank you for everyone here, everyone watching us online, Father. I pray that this word, Father, will go out and accomplish, Father, what you have called it to accomplish, Father. Your word never returns void, Father. So I pray that our hearts would be receptive, Father, that our eyes would be open, our ears would, would be open to hear what the Spirit of the Lord wants to say to each and every one of us, Father, and that our, the eyes of our heart would be enlightened, Father. So we just thank you, Lord, and we praise you, Father, and, and to you be the glory in all, all that we say and do in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You know, today, the, uh, Brother Tony said we're, we're doing communion. Uh, we do it the first Sunday of every month. And every time I think about it, when, when we're going to have communion, I start to think about what, what the Lord has done. What, what are we celebrating? What are we remembering what did what did he do and um earlier this week there was a couple from the spanish service that came and we were visiting with them and we were talking of uh the importance of having uh, a will in place um when it, because ever since they started coming here the lord has blessed them i mean supernaturally they are super blessed, and, and you know, they're just things that the Lord puts in our hands because in order to prosper in this world, you have to come to the realization that everything that you own doesn't belong to you. Amen? Amen? It belongs to the Lord. He only allows you to use it. He puts, you, he puts things in your hands because he finds you faithful, Right? to take care of those things, to be a steward of what he's put in your hand. And if we have uh, the word right in our heart, we know that all things is so that we can grow the kingdom of God. Amen? It's for his kingdom, for his purposes. So we need to keep that in mind. And so we were talking about um, inheritance and, and, you know, what you know, just giving them advice and things that we'd been through and we've seen and, um, and something to encourage them. And so I started to think about the inheritance that the Lord left us. We have a great inheritance. Amen. Amen? And we're going we're gonna to see here a little bit. First, I'm going to go to Proverbs 13, 22. It says, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. But the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. Amen. Amen. The Bible talks a lot about uh, money. If you go to the scripture, you might try to spiritualize a lot of the things that are said in the word. But there are so many uh, chapters and scriptures that are actually talking about money. And I believe the Lord gave us so many scriptures and so many uh, uh, teachings on money because he knew that that's the main thing that we were going to struggle with and that's like i mean the the least thing in the kingdom of god 
So we need to get that right, amen, first of all. And, and, we're gonna, and we inherit great things, which we're going to see here in a bit. So it says, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. Pastor Jesus here, he's a good man. And he's left an inheritance to his children and his children's children. If he's a good man, how much more is God? He's not a man, but he's our father. He's our daddy. Who's your daddy? <laughs> yeah, my daddy owns the, the whole world, the universe. And, and I'm his son. I'm his child. Amen. And he's going to leave an inheritance. He has left an inheritance to us, to his children. Amen? Thank you, Lord. And so here it's just saying that, that you know, he, God's going to leave us, has left us an inheritance. So we get his blessing and we get all the promises that are in the word of God. And it says, but the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. That's just saying those who have not received uh, Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, they don't get anything because they're not trusting in the Father. And so all that's stored up for us, more for us, right? <laughs> But God is a good God, and he, he, he's given us so many things. And we're going to see that here in the New Testament and the Old Testament. And uh, first of all, let me give you a definition of what testament is. It says, testament is something that serves as a tangible proof or evidence. A formal written directive providing for the distribution of one's property after death, a will. Amen? So that's what it is. That's what testament means, and, and, and that's what it is. It's something that was left to us that we didn't have to work for. Has anybody ever received an inheritance? No? You received? Did you have to work for it? No. What you do? You just... You just took it, right? So that's what the Lord has given us, an inheritance, something that we didn't have to pay for that was left to us, and all we have to do is take it. Amen? So in the Old Testament, we see all the stories uh, of what our forefathers did, and those stories are there so that we can learn from them, lessons, lessons from what the, the things that they went through and how God got them through and the, the, all the faithful, uh, all the patriarchs, you know, all the stories, everything you learn, you learn from all that they went through. Amen? And then in the New Testament, we have Jesus. Jesus appears, and he teaches us how to walk in that inheritance that we have and, and how to use it and how to receive it. But we need to read... The will. We need to read the testament in order to know what is it that we got and how are we supposed to use it and what is the purpose. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that He has left all that for us. And in Galatians chapter 3, we're going to read 27 to 29. Thank you, Lord. 3.27 says, For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. This is talking about, of course, the baptism, water baptism. When we go, when we go to baptism, we, we are, it's, it represents us going into death with Jesus Christ, right? And coming up, rising up again. And with, with him in us, we, come back, we, we, we go down and we become one with him by the Holy Spirit. And when we come up, right? In verse 28, it says, There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. We're all one. It, it, back in, in the Old Testament, under the law, there was a lot of separation. Jews and Greeks didn't get along. And even Jews with some Jews, the Samaritans, the ones that married into 
the wrong race, you weren't supposed to marry outside your race, they didn't get along. But they were under the law. And so they were not to get along. And then they were slaves and they were free. And then male nor female. Females did, were second-class citizens in the Old Testament. So the law kept them all separated. Amen? They were all separated, but now we are one in Christ Jesus. Amen. And that's why it says there, there's neither Jew nor Greek. We're all Jews, spiritual Jews, not by nationality, but we are, we are the true Jews. It says in, in Romans 2.29 that we are the Jews interior, inside, in our heart, not by circumcision, but the circumcision of the heart. Amen? So don't get into, don't jump into what the world is saying that, you know, that's, that are finding, fighting, trying to get us to fight against the racist, critical race theory, and, and all the things that the, that the world teaches. Don't get into that because we are children of God and we are brothers and sisters with every other Christian in the whole world. And we're all, we're, we're all one. That would be like me fighting with my brother, my carnal brother. He's my brother. But we are not to fight with one another. Amen? In verse 29, it says, And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Remember, Abraham's seed was God, right? And the way God treats Jesus is the same way that he treats us because we are in him by faith. Through faith we are in Christ and Christ is in us. So the way God sees Jesus, he sees you and me. Amen? Thank you, Lord. And we are also guaranteed that this covenant that we have will never be voided because of our performance. We can never be good enough to, to have all these blessings and promises. It's not by what we do, it's what Jesus did for us. Amen? All we have to do is take it. All we have to do is, is be in Jesus, and then we receive all the benefits that he, that he has. Amen? And the only way I, I saw this and, and that I could explain it is, like, my grandchildren are going to get an inheritance from us, Right? It, it says that we leave it to our children's children. Okay, so for our children, and then there's enough for our grandchildren. Now, our, our children, they're part of our home unit, and they might have gone through the things that we did. When there was lack, they were in lack, and when, when there was a struggle, they struggled. So it cost them something. But my grandchildren, they don't have a clue. They don't even care. They don't even know, right? Because as kids, they just live. They're, they're not worried about paying the utility bill or, or that there's a mortgage. They're not worried about where they're going to sleep or where they're going to go when, when they get picked up from school. They're going home. Or what they're going to wear or, or what they're going to eat. They just know that mommy and daddy are going to tuck them in at night and and their clothes is going to be laid out for them so they could get ready for school in the morning. Amen? And when they get home, they could go to the fridge and get a snack before dinner. And that they don't have to worry about what they're going to eat. They don't have a clue. They're not worried about all that. And that's how the Lord says that we should be. It says in Matthew 6, or 38, that seek first the kingdom of God. And all these things are going to be added unto us. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to be concerned. You know, God is going to provide for you because you are his son and you're his daughter and you live in the kingdom of God. We need to understand that we're in this world, but we're not living in this world. We're living in the kingdom of God. Amen. Our lives should be a whole lot better than, than the person that doesn't know Christ. Amen? And I think we are... All of us are living a, a blessed life. Amen? I don't think there's anyone here that has a need. If you do, we don't know about it. But God, God has already provided for all your needs. Amen? In Galatians 4, 1 through 7, 
It says, now I say that the heir, as long as he is the child, does not differ from a slave, though he is master of all. This, mean, this means this person has not yet received the Lord Jesus Christ. We were all born into sin. We're born into sin, and then we're, we, as children, we're covered by the Lord, but then we, there comes a time when, when we make a decision for ourselves to accept the Lord and, and, and live for God, amen, to accept him as our Lord and Savior. And it says as children, they don't, they don't understand, but they're actually masters of all. As I was reading this, I, was, I thought of my son. When he was a little boy, he, he didn't know. He just knew that he was in, in our home, right? But he, he owns everything in the house. He didn't have to ask me, Mom, can I, get a, can I have a drink? Can I get a snack? He knew where they were, and he went and got it. He was a master of the home. And most of the kids are masters of the home, right? <laughs> they, just, they just do. In verse 2, it says, but is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the Father. Amen? And 3, it says, even so we, even so us, when we were children, we were in bondage under the elements of the world. In other words, we were under the law. We were, we were lost in our sin. But when Jesus came, hallelujah, we came into the children of God. In verse 4, it says, but when the fullness of the time had come, that means when Jesus came at the right time, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem, to redeem those who were under the law that we might receive the adoption as son. Redeem here in this, in this scripture says to buy out of the slave market. We were in the slave market. We were slaves to sin. Because of the fall of Adam, we were born into sin until we come to the Lord. Amen? And verse 6 it says, And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. And that's Aramaic for daddy. <laughs> daddy! <laughs> Who are you going to call on when you have a need? You call your daddy, Right? He has the answer to everything, and he has provision for everything that you have need of. And daddy's always going to answer you when you call out to him. Amen. Don't compare him to your earthly father because it might not be good. But just look to him that he's a father like no, none other. You know, you might have had a good father or be a good man here on this earth, but nothing compares to our daddy. Amen. And verse 7 says, therefore, you are no longer a slave but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. You're an heir to the kingdom of God. You're an heir in the kingdom of God. Amen? Being an heir of God is greater than being an heir of the richest man in this world. Amen? Because we were redeemed from sin. We were saved from going to hell. Amen? Amen? He's given us a life. He's granted us a huge inheritance. It's a supernatural inheritance that he has given us. And everything that Jesus has, so do we. In 1 John 4, 17, it says that as Jesus is, so are we. Just like Jesus is, so are you. Do you get it? Just like Jesus is, so are we. We are just like Jesus here. It says here in this world. Right now, in this world, we're just like Jesus because we're an heir with him. Amen? Romans 8, 14 to 17, it says, For as many are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. There it is again. Daddy. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children of God, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we might also be glorified together. Amen? We're heirs of God. And it says co-heirs with God, with Jesus, joint heirs. 
with Jesus. So like he is, so are we right now. It's like my husband and I, when we got married, we became one flesh. We're one body. We're one together. So everything that he owns, he owns 100%. And everything that I own, I own 100%. Together we own 100%. Amen. Amen. I would put those in, in, in documents. You know, what's your ownership part? I put 100%. And, and it would have, what's his ownership? He owns 100%. You can't both own 100%. In the kingdom of God, we can. Because it's the way it is, right? Whatever uh, are the title deeds that we have, they're in both names. I own 100% and so does he. That's the way we are with Christ. We are, we are joint heirs. Everything he owns, we own as well. Amen. Everything he has, we have as well. Right now. Today. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. In Luke 12, 23, it says, Do not fear, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it in heaven. It's in heaven. Amen. There's no suffering in heaven. There's no sickness. There's no lack. The streets are made of gold in heaven. Amen. We live in the kingdom of God. Our streets are, are made with gold. Picture it. Look at it. See who you are. See what your inheritance is. Amen. You are heir. You're an heir. Begging God to give you something is living in unbelief. It's like mocking him. It's like saying everything that he did on the cross for us didn't matter. Lord, I need, to, I need you to forgive me my sins again. He's not going back to the cross all over again. They've already been forgiven. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. And trying to be good for God doesn't work either because it's not what you did. It's what he did for us. And we just, we just receive it. Amen. We just take it. Thank Amen? You, the great exchange that he did on the cross for us. He took our shame and our sorrow. Amen. And he gave us his righteousness. He gave us justification, sanctification, redemption, and glorification. We're going to be glorified when he comes back for us. Amen. And we live a life in him now, today. We live as he lives because we're heirs. We're sons and daughters of the king. So you need to start acting like royalty. Don't forget, don't forget who your daddy is. Who's your daddy? The king of kings, Abba Father. So you're royalty. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Ephesians chapter 1, and verse, starting at verse 18. Here we have a, a prayer that Paul was praying for us. And we could still pray it. And in verse 18, it says that the eyes of your understand, understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. So Paul was praying that, that we would open our eyes, that the eyes of our understanding is like the eyes of your heart, that you would understand what your inheritance is, what you have in Christ. And that prayer has been since he wrote it and is still on today. He's praying that you will understand your inheritance in Christ. Amen. It's for you. It's in our born again spirits. It's, it's, it's in the spiritual realm. And the spiritual, or the spiritual realm should be more, more real to us than, than this physical realm that we live in. Because we're not supposed to be living like the world. We're supposed to be living like royalty. Because God's already provided for everything we need. It's in the spiritual realm. And, and you know how to do that. Just pray the word of God and with the things that you ask. And if God put a word or if God gave you a word and you have that word, you hold on to that word and you pray that word and you find your scripture that goes with what God has spoken to you and you pray it and it will come to pass. It will come from the spiritual into the physical where you need it. Amen? In verse 19, it says, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us 
That means for our benefit. What's the exceeding greatness of his power for our benefit? Amen. Who believe. We're the believers, right? According to the working of his mighty power. And he's just saying that we get a revelation of the power that we already have in us. Amen. The power that we have in us is, is raising from the dead power. I mean, this power raised Jesus from the dead. It raised Lazarus from the dead. It raised a lot of people. It's still raising people from the dead today. But to realize that you have that power living in you. This is a prayer that Paul left us that he's still praying. Church, you got to get this. Because we have a job to do. We've got to be out there. We've got to be Jesus out in, in, in our community. And in this world, with all the craziness that's going on in the world, and I mean, we're, we're fighting, well, we'll get to it here. We're fighting a spiritual battle. In verse 20, it says, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right, right hand in heavenly places. If we're in Christ, then we have received his position. We're positioned in Christ. We're in Christ then we have his position. We're seated at the right hand of Christ, the right hand of, G of God in Christ. Amen. He's seated there, and if we're in him, we're seated right there as well. Amen. And look what it, what it goes on to say. It says, far above all principality, power, might, dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but in that which is to come. You're above, you're above everything. You're above every name, Every disease has a name. You're above all that. You're above all, the, all the, the principalities and the power. Those are the demonic spirits that are in the, in, the, in, in the atmosphere. You're above that. They're under your feet. Amen. And it says, keep going here, 22. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church. This is emphasizing that God, Christ is our, the head of our, the church, right? And just like our head controls our body, he's, he's our head. And we're under, we're under his leadership. And 23 says, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Jesus Christ himself said he wasn't complete without his body. We're his body. He, he chose to not be full, it says, which is the fullness of him. So he chose to be incomplete without the church. And it's his body filled with himself, which is us, him and us. Amen? Does it make sense? Yeah. And he's given us everything we need to, to fight off uh, the demonic spirits that are coming against us. There's a lot of uh, Christians today that are, that are crying and, and begging God to make the devil leave them alone, and it's not going to work. He gave you the authority. You have the authority. You stop them. The world says that, um, that the kingdom of God, since John the Baptist has been, um, there's been violence against it, but the violent take it by force. So you have to stand up and take it by force. You have to fight. We're in a battle. There's a spiritual battle going on right now, and there's spiritual battle in, in a lot of us. You know, I've 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 prayed with Christians that are that are they're struggling and, and crying because the enemy's attacking them. Well, get up and fight. God's not going to come or Jesus isn't going to do it for you. He gave you the authority. He told you to do it. Amen. If the enemy is attacking you in your house, get him out of there. If you have to open the doors and tell him where to go, look, here's the door, get out. Amen. And know when you, you're being attacked by the enemy. Because sometimes you let your guard down. He's going to use your husband or your wife to, to say something and it's going to strike you the wrong way. And you have to know that it's the enemy trying to, to steal your peace. Don't let him do that. Amen. It's time to fight, church. It's time to speak back. Amen? Stand up and fight. Thank you, Lord. In Luke chapter uh, 4, starting at verse 18, 
Jesus came for you. Amen? It says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. This is Jesus. Acts 10.38 says that, that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, which went about healing all that were oppressed of the devil. And every disease that was, he was anointed to do that. And if he was anointed, who's anointed? You are. <laughs> Amen? To preach the gospel to the poor. Now, the gospel means the too good to be true news, right? And some of the translations, it says the good news. So he preaches the good news to the poor. Why is preaching the gospel to the poor good news? Be, yeah, the poor, yeah. You, you, the good news is that you don't have to be poor, right? You don't have to be poor. That's good news to a poor person that's poor. In and, Second and Corinthians 8, 9, it says, Jesus became poor that you might be rich. Amen. Amen. That's his word. That's what he left you. Amen. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. How many of y'all have ever had your heart broken? It's painful. It hurts. And sometimes you think you, you just can't, you just can't go on. Life will never be the same. You know, you have that hole in your heart and you just think you're just going to die and you can't, you're having a hard time even taking a breath. But Jesus is the one who heals us emotionally. Amen. He comes to heal your broken heart so you don't have to live with that pain. To proclaim, proclaim liberty to the captives. Jesus came to set us free. Set us free from addiction. Set us free from deception. It says in first in Colossians 1.13 that when we accept the Lord Jesus as our Lord and Savior, he translates us from darkness into light. He sets us free. Jesus frees people from demonic bondage and torment. Acts 26.18 says that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. You have power and authority over the enemy. Amen. And let me tell you, the enemy is real. He is real. Just as much as God and Jesus are real and the Holy Spirit's real, he's real. And you know, when you come out of a deception, if you've been deceived and you come out of that, and God calls you out, you're going to have a battle. It depends. It just depends because... When I would, when, well, y'all know my story after 20 years of being in unforgiveness and I finally set myself free. And this morning when I was thinking about it, I thought it, I, I'm thinking about Christmas. I like the Scrooge movies. <laughs> so, you know, Scrooge, he comes in, uh, well, not Marley, Scrooge's business partner. And he comes in as a ghost and he's all in chains and he's carrying this long chain and and tells him, you know, you need to live your life better. He gives Scrooge, y'all know this story. But that's what I pictured when we're captive, we're in chains. We might be free in the world. Like, you know, the, the ladies at the jail, I say, you're, you're free. If, you, if God lives in you, you can be free even though you're in jail. Because the freedom is inside of you. And there's a lot of people out here in the world that, that are in bondage. You know, and, and, and the things that go against God, it keeps you in bondage. And, and you might think you're just living it up and being out there, but you're in bondage. And, and when, you, when, you, when, when he lets the captives free, when you get freed, you f feel that weight just fall off of you and the chains. You can almost hear them drop, and they drop off of you. Amen? But then comes a battle. Then comes a battle because the devil had you. And now you're set free, especially if you have a calling on your life. He's going to fight you because he wants to steal. Remember, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. If he can steal the, the word from you, if he can steal your freedom from you, he's got you. He's killed you and destroyed you. And so then comes the battle, and he will come and fight you. And it's, it's real, and, it's, and you can feel it, and... And I was in the middle of those battles, 
And I'm here to tell you they're real. But you know what? You tell the devil the truth. And that's the word of God. Amen. What did Jesus do when he was being tempted out in the, in the wilderness? He said he would come back with the word. You know, he would say, it is written. And that's what you, call, you do. When I didn't know what else to say, I would just start praying the Lord's Prayer. And that spirit would lead me and would, it would, I, could, I could feel it beating me up and throwing me around. And, and whatever scripture came up to me, the word will make the enemy flee from you. And if you worship, oh my God, worship the Lord and they would run out of here faster than, <laughs> like the road runner. They're out of <laughs> because they don't want to hear the word of God. And they don't want to hear worship. You're worshiping the, the God Almighty. Amen. So it's time to fight, folks. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Where was I? Oh, and the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive, and, the, and recovery of sight to the blind. He, he came to open your eyes to what you had, the mystery. You know, it always talks about the mystery, but he came to open your eyes so you could see what that mystery is. And it's Christ in us, the hope of glory. Amen? First Colossians 1, uh, not First Colossians, Colossians 1, 27. It's the hope, that the, the realization that, that we have an inheritance and that Christ is in us, right? And that Jesus carried our sicknesses and our pain, and by his stripes we are healed. Amen. To set at liberty those who were oppressed, he delivers us from depression, oppression, whatever pressions you have, whatever's pressing you, <laughs> he delivers you from that, right? He gives us the oil of gladness for, for a night, for morning. Amen? Thank you, Lord. 19, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Verse 20, then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And, and the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Today. Amen. Today, if you've never received the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior, today is the day to do it. Today is your day to be set free. Amen. Jesus became sin so that we could become his righteousness. 2 Corinthians 5.21. Jesus became cursed from the law so that we could be redeemed from the curse and walk in covenant blessing. Galatians 3.13. Jesus paid for everything already and left us a great inheritance. And all we have to do is take it. John 10.10, 10, like I just said, the thief comes not, but for to steal, to kill, and destroy. And I have come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. Life here is talking about the Zoe life, the life of God. It's a life that's filled with vitality and supernatural life. Amen? It's the life of God. And abundantly, it's here it says, to be above, beyond what is regular, extraordinary, or even exceeding, super abundance. That's the kind of life we should be living, a super abundant life. And when our thoughts and our emotions and our actions line up with the word of God, we will find that we would be living this Zoe kind of life. And it will just be effortless because you're walking in, in the word of God. Amen. It is his life living in us. In Romans 8, 32, it says, he, he who did not spare his own son, but deliver him up for all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? If he didn't spare the life of his son so that we could have forgiveness of sin, that was a great price. If he didn't spare him from that, what makes you think that he's going to stop from giving you all things that you need? 
Because all things that you need is way less than what he paid on the cross for you. Amen? Thank you, Lord. And freely gives is, is just stressing that this is something that the Lord will do by grace, by his grace, and not because of our performance. Amen? And there's a, a story about a, a river. And the word of God in, in Revelation, verse 22. I don't know if you can get it up there real quick, Michael. Revelation 22. It was just something that I had been meditating on. And I wasn't sure if to share it or not, but I've got time. One through five, it says, and he showed me a, a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of the street and on either side of the river was the tree of life which bore 12 fruits, each one yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Our nations need healing today, amen. And there shall be no more curse. Do you know there's no more curse if you're in Christ Jesus? Go read Deuteronomy 28 and read all the blessings from verse 1 to 14 and then from 14 to like 15 to like 65. It lists all the curses. And if you're going through anything like that, it's a curse and you can, you can cast it down. Amen. Verse 3, it says, And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. And his servants shall serve him. They shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. There shall be no night there. They need no lamp nor light of the sun, for the Lord God gives them light. And they shall reign forever and ever. Amen. There's a river flowing from the throne of God. If you ever have prophetic dreams, if you ever uh, dream of a clear river, that's the river of the Holy Spirit. Amen? And just use your imagination and try to picture it. And Because I've seen a river here coming from this way, because this is east, right? <laughs> is this east? Yeah. And this is west. And several years ago, you know, I've seen the Lord walk in here. I've seen him come through here. I've seen people, um, the, the cloud of witnesses. I've seen witnesses come through here. People have gone on behold for us. But one day during worship, I saw the river that was flowing from there, was coming this way. And I think we were singing a song about the river. So wanted to get in that river, jump on it, and just dance around, dance around in that river, and jump around in the river, and I could almost feel the splashing of the river coming on me. But picture the river's flowing this way, and a lot of us Christians, we're facing this way, and God's back here. So we're saying God's got our back, which he does. But he's behind you. And the river's going this way, so it's flowing, right? And so in the river are the blessings and the promises, and, and they're flowing down river, and you're standing here, but you've got your back to them, so you don't even know what's coming to you, and they're just flowing by you. Because by the time, if, if you're in the river, by the time you try to reach something, 
that's flowing by you, if it's going quick, you're not going to be able to catch it. You might stumble and fall trying to get it. You might get it, but it's gonna, you're going to stumble and fall and possibly drown <laughs> if you're not a good swimmer <laughs> to try to get that blessing. And then you're watching uh, other brothers and sisters, and, and you see them, oh, he got his blessing. He got that brand new car that I wanted, and, and look at this brother over here. He paid off his house, and that's a blessing I wanted. Lord, I'm praying, and why aren't I'm, I want these same blessings? And, and oh, they, I prayed for that woman, and she got healed, and I, have, I haven't got healed yet. <laughs> What's up with that, Daddy? And they're going, and, and they're just passing you by. But God wants you to turn around. So you turn around and, and you see the throne of God and you open your arms and, Father, I just receive. I just take everything that you have for me. I come to you, Father, not because I want the blessings, because I love you. You're my daddy and you've freely given me all things that I need. Sorry for not receiving them, Father, but I take them now. And I thank you, Lord. I'll never turn my back on you. I'll face you and I'll, I'll just receive and I'll just take what you have for me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. And just receive what the Lord has given. Get in that river and face him and, and just thank him. We're coming into a month where we're reminded to be thankful and grateful. And we shouldn't be, have to be, have a special month for us to be thankful and grateful, but, but we ought to be every day, you know? And this, I found my, myself this week just being amazed with the goodness of God, how wonderful he is to us, the inheritance that he gave us, not because we're lovely <laughs> or we're nice or we're good, but because daddy loves us and everything that's in his house, we can, we can go and take. We don't have to ask for food. He'll provide it. Just go to the fridge and get your snack. <laughs> Amen. When you go to the grocery store, pray. Thank you, Lord, that, that whatever I need is, is going gonna, is gonna to be there and it's going to be, it's gonna be a good price. It's going to be the price that you can afford to pay. And he'll make it that way. Amen? Every time when I go out to buy something, I, I pray and I say, Lord, thank you. I thank you that everything that I need, I'm going to find, and it's going to be on sale. And that's what I believe, and that's what I receive. Because that's what we say. Oh, and, and this is another good story then, that how God works, and, and he'll provide for the things that you can't, that, that maybe you don't want to spend your money on right now. And if my brother doesn't mind, I'll share what happened to him. Yes. <laughs> it was real s simple. Um, he had to take in his grand dog because uh, his grandson, well, y'all know he, he has cancer, and so they didn't want the dog around the baby. So my brother took the dog and brought it to his house. And he was saying, I'm going to have to buy another um, doghouse, another cage for the dog, and, and he goes, but, you know, people put a lot of stuff on the edge of the street, they want to get rid of stuff, and he goes, I bet I'm going to find a doghouse on the edge of the street, and he was coming to my house, this was last Saturday, I think, right, last Saturday, he was coming to my house, and guess what, there was a, a dog cage or a house on the side of the road, and he goes, there was another man there because there was like a cage and a, or something else. And he goes, that man was picking up the other piece. And he goes, he's going to leave the doghouse and I'm going to get it. He said he went back around and the doghouse was there. That's how our God works. Amen. He provided something for him. It's not hard. You just have to believe and know that your daddy wants to be good to you. Amen. Do y'all believe that? It's, it's so awesome. It might be, you know, you might think, oh, that was luck. No, it's not luck. It's your daddy providing for you the things that you need and when you need them. Amen? Thank you, Lord. He is so good to us. 
He is just so good to us. And, um, and there's miracles in our lives every day, but we don't acknowledge them as miracles. We just take it, oh, it just, it just happened or coincidence. There's no such thing as coincidence. Amen? Amen. God is so good to us. This morning we have communion and and um, we have time. It's eleven thirty. We didn't set our clocks back. <laughs> um, the on, only requirement is that that we're saved, that we've accepted the Lord as our Lord and Savior, so that we can uh, participate in communion. Amen. That's what we believe. That's what the Word says. That. Um, if we accept Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, then we can participate because we're, me- we're remembering what he did for us in the cross. And if you're not saved, you're remembering something, you're, it's a lie. Because it's something that you haven't really believed in and accepted. Amen? You know, I was also thinking of, of a story and of the prodigal son. And, and there's two sons, and, and you all know the story, right? That um, he, this son grew up in, in, in daddy's house, in the father's house. And maybe he turned 18, and he decided that he wanted his inheritance, and he was going to go live it up. He was tired of, of living in father's house, and, and he wanted to go out on his own. And so the father gave him what he, what he wanted, and he left. You know, maybe, you know, that compared to being in church as a child and you grew up and then one day you decided, well, I'm going to go see what the world has for me. And you go out there and, and, and then you deplete your blessing. You deplete uh, your inheritance. Because when, when, when it says, the, the word of God says that, that if you're a friend of the world, you're an enemy of God, Right? I see the scripture right now, but I can't remember where it was, but it's in the word James, James, right? And um, so when you're out there, you're, you're an enemy of, of the Lord. And then when you hit rock bottom, you, the, the, the prodigal son hit rock bottom and he found himself feeding the hogs and wanting to eat the food because he had nothing else to eat. And, and he said, what am I doing here? I'm going to go back to my father's house because at least in my father's, I could be a servant. I'll go back and ask him to forgive me and I'll be a servant. And the servants there eat good. <laughs> they eat real good. He goes, so I'll have food to eat. And so he, he goes back home and, and what's the father doing? The father's there waiting waiting for the son. He's looking out for him to come back. Maybe some of us have prodigal sons out there, daughters. Amen? And you're waiting and you're praying. And I'm sure this father was praying. But when you're a child of God and you leave the kingdom, you don't lose your sonship. You just put, you put, you, um, you just block your blessing because you're like an enemy of him because you're out in the world doing worldly things when, and, and you block your blessing, but you're doing it yourself because God is still there. He's waiting for you to come back. And so the son comes back and he asks the, the father for, for forgiveness and, and the father's so happy to see him and he hugs him and, and, he, and he puts a ring on his finger and, and the ring that he puts on his finger is just showing that he has authority now. He has he is, is a sign that he's, he's back home and, and it's his home and he's master of it. And so he gives his authority back. And he puts a robe on the sun and, 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 um, and it covers up all his filthiness. All, everything that he went out, you know, uh, my husband in the Spanish service, he goes, when we, when we leave uh, the presence of God's home, we go and we... We, we roll around with the hogs in the mud because that's what they do, right? And so maybe, you know, the son comes back and maybe he's all filthy because, because of 
what the world is on him and and the dad gets a robe and he covers all all his filthiness and he gives him his righteousness it, it it's a symbol of righteousness a robe of righteousness amen and then he puts sandals on his feet and he has the sandals on his feet is just representative that he owns the whole kingdom and he's back in the kingdom of God. Amen. And then what happens? The son that stayed at home, he gets mad, right? And he represents maybe a lot of us that are in church and we're working, trying to get on God's good side. We're working and working and maybe in every, every filling in wherever it needs to be, things need to get done. You're in every uh, board, you're in every uh, committee meeting, you're, you're working and you're, you're trying to be good and so God will love you and that doesn't work either because it's not about what you do, it's what God did for you. Amen? And so we, we could be on either side of that. Working for God is not, you know, it's good. There's ministry of helps. We need all the help we can get. But don't do it to be on God's good side. Do it because you love the Lord and you want to serve him. Amen? Amen. And so if there's anyone watching us online that, that you, you fit that um, criteria, it's just a story in the Bible. But it's, it, it tells us of our inheritance. When we are in Christ, we don't lose our place. We might lose some rewards, but we don't lose our place. And we need to get back into God's good graces and ask for forgiveness. And, well, we, you know, you, you just said we've been forgiven. <laughs> we are forgiven, but we need to repent okay. and turn around and say, I need to get my life in, in order back. I need to be in God's good graces. And the Lord's there. He's just waiting for you. Because it's his good pleasure to give you all things. Amen? It's his good pleasure. You know, when, when I go out to, when we go out to buy a major item, you know, we pray about it first. We ask the Lord, is this the right step to take? And, and we do. And then when we go out and, and the, way I, the way I feel it is when I, sense, when I sense the Lord touch my heart and I have peace, and then I know that's the item I'm supposed to buy because that's where he's leading me to get because it's, it's his good pleasure to give me all things, you know? And the thing that I struggle with more is buying a new car because I think that is just terrible because it's, it's, it's a depreciable asset. It depreciates, but, but we need it, right? We've got to go to work. We've got to get places. That's just the, the transportation that we need nowadays. We don't have donkeys. <laughs> you know, our sandals might not last walking to Austin. It's just not, you know, it's just not for today. But it's, a good, it's God's good pleasure to give you all things that you need. Amen. And they're blessings from the Lord. So hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah that he provides for everything that we need, right? Even the food we eat. So y'all start coming up here if you want. Uh, those of y'all that are watching us online or you want, you know, maybe you haven't been living right, you want to come back and to God's good graces, you just need to pray a prayer of, of repentance and, and or if you just want to accept the Lord for, for the first time, just say, Heavenly Father, I believe in my heart that that you came to live in this world to show me how to live like you, Father. You died and were crucified. You were buried and you were resurrected on the third day. And Father, I believe that in my heart and I confess it with my mouth that I make you the Lord of my life, my Lord and Savior. And I thank you for saving me. Thank you, Father. For those are, Lord, I repent of how I've been living my life and and not being considerate of the inheritance that you have given me, Father. And I just repent now and I receive all that you have for me, Father. 
and that I would never, ever think that it's all about me, but that it is that you give wealth to, to those, Father, that, that know that everything is for the kingdom of God, to increase it, Father, to be a blessing to others, Father. So, Lord, we just thank you this morning for your word. We thank you for your presence, Father. And we thank you for those who have accepted you as Lord and Savior. And if you did that for the first time, if you will get in touch with us, uh, our website, we would love to send you a book that will explain a little bit more of what you have just done. And we want to be the first to welcome you into the kingdom of God. And we're so happy for you. And, they, and the word of God says that there's, there's a celebration in heaven. Amen. There's a celebration going on that uh, the angels are, are celebrating that you came to the Lord. God is so good. And all the time, he is good. <laughs> Always and forever. receive something this morning. read out, out of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 22-23. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Humbly, Father, today, Father, we remember the great sacrifice that you made on the cross for us. And we break this bread and we take it, Father, as a symbol of the bro your broken body on the cross to he for our healing, Father. And we thank you, Lord. We remember you, Father, and we thank you, Lord. We can never thank you enough for this, this great sacrifice that you made for us. Thank you, Lord. We bless this bread in the name of Jesus. Take the bread. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, 
this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Father, we thank you for this drink, Father, that represents your blood, Father. We thank you, Lord, for your shed blood. We thank you for the new covenant that you love for us, Father. And we will remember you, Father, every day, every moment of our lives, Father, till the day you come. Bless this drink in the name of Jesus. You may take the drink. Thank you, Lord. And it says in some of the scriptures that they sang a song and they went out joyfully, amen? amen. So we'll sing and then if any, anybody needs prayer, we'll be up here to pray for any of your needs. If you have a need of anything. And don't forget that we love you all all very much. We're always praying for you. We love you and, and Jesus loves you. Amen. amen. Don't forget that. Thank you. Nothing but the